Hi, my name is Jeff H. Seip from practiceinterviews.com where we offer a host of services and we have a ton of free resources. Check out our website. In today's video, we are going to cover the team match stage at Google. There's actually very limited data out there on this stage of the process. And so I wanna uncover just a few items in today's conversation. And then of course, we wanna talk about what you're gonna do and what will yield success in those team match calls. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Item one is the who. So I wanna break this into two specific groups, engineers and everybody else. And so Google will hire engineers more than any other role. So that's why it's most likely that you'll get into that team match stage if you're going in as an engineer. Now for interns, the team match stage is pretty much guaranteed. For experienced engineers, it depends. If it's a very specific role, no, you'll get matched early on. If it's not as specific, then yes, you will go through that team match stage. So what does this mean? It means that if you're an experienced back-end engineer that can code in Python, for example, well, I know I need to hire a lot of you. So I can put you into the process. I can give you a couple coding interviews, a couple system design interviews, and a behavioral interview. And if you do well, I can put you in front of a number of teams. So it's just a more simplistic process. Now on the other side of the coin, we see this coming up for more generic roles. How will you know? You'll know by the job description, such as a listing that just says product manager or says technical program manager leadership. What does this mean? It means that they literally think they can put you into any product area, whether that's search or YouTube or cloud. So in both cases, they are really looking for more of an overarching skill set and they feel like, hey, with your past experience, you might be a match for any of these teams because if it's YouTube or search or cloud, for example, you're gonna need to learn a lot of company specific items anyway. So item two is the when, and this actually comes up in multiple different times during the process. So I wanna uncover when it comes up and what that really looks like. So item one is after the hiring committee. So again, for engineering interns, for example, this would be a very common time. After hiring committee can also be for those that really crush the interviews. So what do I mean? If you go into the interviews and across the board, you just do well in all your interviews. Well, as a recruiter, I'm gonna put you in front of hiring committee because I feel like we probably don't need a team beforehand to really create that nice statement of support, get that push from the hiring manager. I probably don't need it. So I'm gonna put you through hiring committee and then it becomes a very easy pitch to a wider audience of hiring managers because I can simply say, hey, I have Jane, this candidate, she's awesome, and she's already hiring committee approved. A hiring manager, that's good news for them because they know that hiring committee is a difficult part of the process. So I can tell you when I hired program managers and when I hired software engineers, if I had them in front of a more generic role and they really did well, I would always take this approach. Now the second item is before hiring committee. So this really depends. The team may have an absolute set process where they say, look, we only do a team match before hiring committee. And that could just be the group. Secondarily, maybe the interview feedback is pretty good, but it's maybe not as great as Jane's feedback. So we wanna get that hiring manager statement of support. That's really gonna tell hiring committee, this is, this is the reason slash reasons I need to hire Bob. So we're really looking for that team support before going into hiring committee. Third is before the onsite. So this is a little weird and it's definitely the most uncommon, but something might pop up in that initial phone or video interview where the interviewer says, ooh, we should really be focusing on this person for AI or ML because they actually have a domain expertise there and we probably shouldn't put them into the generic funnel. We really wanna test for those specific skills. So 
Sometimes a hiring manager will come in at this point and just have that quick conversation. Are they likely and more likely to kind of like retweak it and have that hiring manager be a part of the interview process? Yes, but I have seen this casual approach taken both when I was at Google and we have heard this approach being taken with clients. Again, it's a much less common path, but if they really want to help you get specialized and get you in front of the right role and do what's best for Google, that's what's going to happen. The last item is that remember there's only certain criteria to get through this process. So while Google does have some rigidity in the process, they also have some flexibility. So when this team match call happens, it could be extremely random. It could be in the middle of the process. That's very, very uncommon and unlikely, but we just don't know what is the process looking for that you can pass the interviews, that you can do those awesome presentations, and ultimately that you can get to the end and pass hiring committee. And remember, hiring committee isn't even a part of the process for 100% of roles anymore either. So just remember that it's a very fluid, very flexible environment and anticipate anything. But these are the three most common stages and after hiring committee and before hiring committee make up the vast majority of when these team match calls happen. Item three is the what. Okay, finally we're getting into the weeds of what you actually need to do to have success in this team match call. And it's usually done via the phone, but it can be done via video too. If you get the opportunity and you feel like this is really good for you and you like being on video, ask if you can have it done via video. You don't want to push too much, but it can really help. I've seen a lot of feedback. Feedback specifically coming from recruiters, feedback online that says, it's a casual conversation. They're going to call it that. This is a casual conversation that you need to treat as seriously as any of your interviews. So the first item is continue to prep like a normal interview. Practice your behavioral answers. Think about your open-ended clarifying questions, frameworks. Some hiring managers will push and test you and you need to be prepared for that. So just treat it like a normal interview. Item two is your elevator pitch. So you start and want to start to think about how are we selling ourselves? How are we making sure that this hiring manager really understands our skill set? You don't want it to sound planned, to sound rigid. You want it to have nice flow, but you also want to be selling yourself a little bit. So a really short elevator pitch is going to be great. Practice that with a friend, a family member, etc. And that correlates well with the third item, which is research. If you can get information on the hiring manager, on the team, on the product area, do whatever you can to research that area because that will go back into your elevator pitch specifically if you have those skills, but we want to do as much research as possible. Four is questions. You are going to have at least 20 to 30 pre-planned questions going in your hiring manager is probably going to answer five or 10 of them in your conversation. And that's why you want so many so that you can sound excited, engaged, prepared, enthusiastic, etc. So what does this flow look like? We've talked a lot about this warm and fluffy is to start. What do you love about Google? What do you love about your job? What is the most fun thing you're working on right now? And then you can transition into what does success look like in this position? What does the day-to-day -day look, look like? How do you measure success? How does this fit into the overall strategy of the organization, et cetera? And then the cadence, the flow. If you go in with all these questions, at some point you're gonna to wanna to cut yourself off and say, Sue, I love to ask questions. Obviously, I'm really excited to be at this stage and chatting with you. Um, just cut me off anytime. Let me know if you want me to stop asking questions. So it doesn't seem like you don't have the awareness about them and their schedule. That's also very important. Item five, as important as questions is this positivity piece in these conversations. Everything you say is positive. Have that positive pitch, positive tone, positive words, positive about past employers, um, past coworkers, etc. Everything sounds positive. Don't ask for anything in this conversation. Just be super excited and enthusiastic and use positive words. It's going to be critical for your success. Item five is multiple. So 
This question comes up quite a bit, and we've seen this coming through from our clients, which is they have multiple team match conversations, and sometimes they come at different stages. Like they spoke with one team, they're feeling pretty good, and then another team comes in a few days later. Is your responsibility to yourself to take all these team match calls? Of course you wanna do it in a timely manner and the right manner, but you wanna be testing a lot of teams. If there's a lot of teams interested, you wanna take all these calls, and if other hiring managers ask, you can say, yes, I'm speaking with another team. I'm excited to have the opportunity to speak with everyone. Of course, if there's a specific demand or need to get me on the team, I will make sure I'm making quick decisions for you and what's best for the organization. So again, that really, really positive approach. But if you're getting matched with multiple teams, that's a really good sign, lots of interest. That means the interviews went well and that you're in high demand. Item six is no match. So unfortunately this happens just like in life, timing is everything. So it's gonna be one of two things. No team is ever identified and you just never find a match or I've had a client speak to up to 12 teams and it didn't work out every time. Now, of course, we'd wanna go back to those earlier items and make sure that those conversations, all the right things were being said and that takes some practice. But ultimately, sometimes after going at it for a month or two months or three months, your recruiter's gonna to wanna to take a break. That's okay. Again, sometimes the timing just isn't right. So you really wanna figure out that cadence with your recruiter. Can I check in once a month, once a quarter? Because the likelihood that Google comes back to you in these scenarios, it's like a 90% plus. If you made it to the team match stage, your interview feedback was good enough to get there. They will revisit you. You just need to be a little bit patient, but you can be proactive with your recruiter and that will really help. I know that this is pretty high level. Uh, I really hope that this feedback just uncovers maybe one or two specific items that will help you in this part of the process. If you like our content, please hit that like button. We love subscribers um, and I really hope this video helps. Thanks.